Um, so, good morning, gentle people. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, very excited. First time I'm traveling in three years. Yay. The pandemic is not over, unfortunately, but uh, I guess we'll make do. Um, so, I'm going to talk about some hardening features that uh, I had the pleasure to uh, implement. Uh, to, not, not all of them, but uh, anyway, uh, oh, I'm Alex, uh, and this work was done for AdaCore. Um, so I'll first give a little bit of context of on, on several of what I mean on why th these very different features are all uh, merged into a single speech, uh, like register scrubbing, stack scrubbing. Uh, hardened conditionals, hardened booleans, uh, control flow redundancy, and, and some of the testing challenges that I faced. I mean, the, the, these are not directly related, but uh, I'll get to that. So uh, we had uh, an Adacore. We had a partner. We started a partnership with one of our big customers, to to the, and we care about. Uh, hardening features, and they care about hardening features, and we we got to a collection, a set of features that we wanted to implement. So we did. Uh, the idea was to catch some software uh, glitches and hardware glitches too. Uh, we had a focus on, on Ada and C primarily, uh, and and uh, a few specific uh, targets, uh, architect machine architectures, but. Uh, we had a strong uh, desire to make them work on all languages supported by GCC and all targets supported by GCC. So this was uh, an important driving uh, concern for us. Um, so register scrubbing first. Um, the plan was to implement that, and fortunately, we were bidden to, to it. We didn't have to implement it, but we contributed to the implementation in a way. Uh, uh, Oracle uh, had at first an implementation that was very specific to one architecture, and we suggested, well, maybe if you do it this way, then it will work for all architectures. And turns out, they liked it, and 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 it did work for other architecture, so uh, we have machine-independent register scrubbing now. Uh, there's this command line flag that was added in GCC 11. Uh, it's also available as a function attribute uh, if you want to scrub registers only on specific uh, functions. And the way it works is to introduce uh, code uh, late in, the R in, in RTL to zero uh, the registers that you want zeroed. Um, there's a target hook to, to, to handle registers that uh, cannot be set directly from an immediate constant. Uh, and it, there, the, the, it's, the default implementation is smart enough that it seems to be able to catch most cases these days, but if, if there is this very weird architecture that for which it doesn't work, then it can be fixed. Ideally, in generic code, if, 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 if that's possible, but if not, uh, machine-specific extension will do. So you, it's flexible enough that you can uh, zero all the registers or only uh, the registers that are used in the function, uh, or even only the general purpose registers or argument passing registers. They're, they're, it's, 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 yeah? Uh, microphone. Uh, okay. Um, do you have an idea of how much of an impact on performance this makes? I'm guessing not a lot. Not a but... clue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, I really don't. Uh, I mean, I took the implementation that was there, right? Uh, I, I didn't actually validate it in any way other than looking that it did what we wanted, and cool. So stack scrubbing. This had also an existing implementation uh, that was talked about in a, in a previous cauldron. I think it was in Manchester. 
Yeah? Um, so, but it hadn't been contributed yet. Uh, and, well, thanks for, 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 for that, Jeremy. Um, turns out that it was machine specific. Uh, it, 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 it required machine specific code. It worked on x86, it worked on RISC V. Uh, but I figure, hey, you know what? I, I, I think I can see a way to make that work on all architectures without machine-specific code, without any machine-specific code. So I set out to, to prove myself right or wrong, and, and I did that. But we drew a lot of inspiration from that implementation. Uh, we, the, the, the notion, for instance, that uh, Functions that have reg, uh, stack scrubbing enabled can only call other functions that will also scrub the stack so as to avoid leaking information. In the end, we found that a little too restrictive, at least for testing, and then we introduced a relaxed mode uh, that, that doesn't impose this, this, this restraint. Uh, but the, the strict mode is also available, so you can, you, you can choose. Default is, is relaxed. Uh, I'll get into detail soon. Uh, we have proposed this for GCC 12. It didn't make it. It was a little too late, I think. Uh, maybe, well, hopefully GCC 13 will get it. We introduced an attribute that you can use to mark types of functions or, or uh, variables. Um, and, and the way it works is that uh, when you call a function that, is, uh, that has uh, stack scrubbing enabled, then the caller will scrub the stack, will zero the, the, the stack. The caller is modified, uh, and, and this makes things a lot easier. You don't have to, 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 to get the function to scrub its own stack while the function is running before returning. You can do that in a context that is a lot more flexible. So that was the insight that I, that I implemented, that I, that I thought of and, and implemented. So in, we, we actually changed this. Yes, Jeremy, microphone, please. So the, the, I'm glad someone's finished this off and done it properly. That's great. Um, how do you deal with long jump? Because that was something that was a real headache for us. Um, I think we don't. I, as in, we, <laughs> we, we detect that and say this function cannot be scrubbed because it's, 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 it doesn't work. I mean, the, 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 we, we report a problem there. Um, I hope that's fair enough. <laughs> oh. Okay. Have you looked at any of the techniques to minimize uh, cache impacts of doing this? Because like you can, you know, in certain cases, you can go ahead and, and uh, either uh, try to get it onto one cache page out of a set or stuff like that. And there's lots of tricks to do that. Or did you just go do it and not worry about those kind of things? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I'll show some code examples that will make it clear what, what is actually going on. Uh, but I wanted to give a rough idea of, of uh, how, uh, what the approach was before getting to that, but it's on the next slide. So basically, we, we actually changed the signature of functions that, that, that have stack scrubbing enabled, uh, well, some of them, and then uh, introduce the, ch the code changes to reflect that in a late eight, uh, IPA pass. And the kind of transformation we do is like this. So we have here a function marked as uh, strubbed, that's short for stack scrub. Uh, um, and so the function is modified in that it gets an extra parameter <clears throat> that is a watermark pointer. Uh, it's going to tell the caller how far its stack uh, use went. Uh, and, and, and this makes the interface of the function stack, uh, stack, a scrub, enab scrub enabled interface. Um, 
which, which means that other uh, functions that have strobing enabled can call it uh, without leaking information. Um, and the first thing a uh, 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 function that is strapped at calls does is to update the watermark, saying, oh, I allocated, allocated this much stack space, so uh, make sure you, you clean this up after me. Uh, the caller, so is modified in that it, it, it allocates a watermark variable and initializes it calling uh, strub enter and then it calls the function with the extra argument, and then when the function returns or escapes with an exception, uh, you call, there's a call for strub leave that will, uh, this is will, uh, what will actually uh, clear the stack. Now, you may remember I mentioned that data types could also be marked for strubbing, yes? So I would imagine that in most cases we can statically determine the, the amount of stack that's being used. But of course only very late in the compilation. Um, you probably didn't think of how to leverage this information to avoid this extra parameter? Uh, no, I didn't. I, 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 I actually, uh, well, by the time that I started thinking about optimizations, I, I, I had settled on, on this approach that okay. is compatible with, well, it is machine independent, which was very important. Uh, it is able to handle variable stack sizes, and, and, and I figured it was not, uh, it didn't seem important enough to leverage the, the fixed size uh, interfaces at that point. If you in line, then you might get some benefit, but you, you, then you pretty much optimize. I, I won't be able to get into that without more context that I'm yet to present. So okay. uh, hold that idea. Uh, uh, I'll try to sneak it in. Now, here I'm marking a variable with uh, uh, for strubbing. Uh, I'll, is that a question? Oh, okay. I wanted to ask, uh, since you said that the, the caller is scrubbing the stack, uh, is this compatible with library functions like yes. in a dynamic library? The, uh, that's, this is exactly what I'm going to talk about now. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you can have a library interface that is in which certain functions are marked uh, as, as uh, having scrubbing enabled in the interface level. Then the, the library both sides, the caller and the callee, have to have that information, and, and, and I mean, the interface is modified. Now, there are cases in which you don't want to modify the interfaces, and, and, and this is where internal uh, strub comes in. So, um, the idea is that for these functions, you do not modify the interface. Uh, this is useful in, in, in the case of libraries, it's also useful in the case of, li of variables that, that are marked for strumming, meaning that you want functions that use these, that read from these variables to be automatically, uh, to, to have strumming enabled automatically for them. So if it's a local variable, then it's just being there is enough. If it's uh, statically allocated, then Reading from it is what triggers the machinery. So you're getting information, and the meaning of the attribute is, if, if you are exposed to that information, I want you to clean up the stack afterwards. So uh, the way it's implemented is that the function is cloned, its body becomes uh, the wrapped body uh, in, the, in the lower part of the slide, and the original function is replaced with a wrapper that maintains the same interface. And, and then it does the, the dance of initializing the watermark, calling the function, the, the, the wrapped function, and then cleaning up the stack. So we retain the interface, but we get the, scrub, the, the stack scrubbing uh, of the wrapped function. 
Now, you may notice that besides the extra watermark parameter, there are other changes that we uh, make uh, for, for the sake of optimization. Big parameters are not copied again. The, in, the wrapper takes them by reference. Um, we handle uh, variable argument lists. We, we couldn't possibly copy all the arguments because you don't know anything about them. But we take the list and pass the list to the wrapped version, and then the wrapped version, wherever it would initialize the, the, the variable argument list, it copies from this hidden argument. It works. Uh, not beautiful, but seems to be working. So um, the built-ins that we use for entering uh, strub contexts and updating the watermark and, and doing the actual scrubbing are inlineable. Uh, and depending on the optimization level, uh, what we do is initialize the watermark uh, for, for enter. We initialize the watermark with the stack pointer. Uh, this is the initial level of the watermark. Unless you're in a function that was called by, uh, that, that, that already has uh, scrubbing enabled, then we take its watermark instead. Uh, this is useful. Well, I'm not actually sure that this is useful. In the end, it doesn't make a lot of difference because it's going to be overrid overridden afterwards. But uh, when you update, now in the context of the call E, the, the, the function that it has strubbing enabled, uh, we, you comp we compare the current watermark value with the stack pointer plus or less red zone, depending on whether stack grows upward or downward. Uh, I have only tested one of these. <laughs> if you're familiar with any machine in which the, stacks, the stack grows the wrong way, <laughs> I'd love to try that. But I have only tested the usual one. Uh, so uh, basically, we would say uh, if, 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 uh, if you're using more stack than the watermark had, then well, update the watermark. Oh, and if you're inside, a fun uh, if you're inlined into a function that has its own watermark, then update that too, because otherwise things might go wrong. Uh, it's, it's, it's not worth going to the details of how it might go wrong. The, there, there are paragraphs in, in the implementation uh, explaining what, what might go wrong. Uh, and then strub leave is, is uh, turning to a conditional call if we are uh, at O2 or higher. Uh, so we can bypass the strubbing if we were not going to clean anything anyway, which happens often after inlining, uh, nested inlining and stuff like that. Uh, at O3, we actually generate the loop. Uh, and and I, I might have written a mem set here, but the mem set turned out to be uh, harder to parse than the, the explicit loop because of support for uh, stack growing upwards or downwards. So that's what the E and P uh, may be reversed depending on the uh, direction of the stack. But the idea is that we loop over uh, the, the interval between current stack pointer and uh, watermark and, and clean, up, clean that up at O3 or higher. Also, uh, when, when we have nested inlining or tail calling, uh, we pass on the watermark pointer from the, the caller to the callee so as to uh, defer the, the, the cleaning up. And, and enable the tail calling. Now, um, besides the, the pass that actually makes this code changes, 
there is an earlier path that assigns modes to the functions. It looks at the code, looks at the variables, looks at what gets called from where, and, and, and assigns uh, a suitable strub mode to each function. Specifically, if, if you request uh, strubbing at calls, it will honor that or report an error. If you request internal uh, strubbing, it will honor that or report an error. If you request through a command line flag that it, it, it be enabled, then it will try one of these modes. Uh, if, if you mark a function to be callable from strub context, then it will check. Uh, it will honor that. If you're in strict mode, then it, it will check that only functions that are callable uh, from uh, strub context are being called. Uh, if, if a function has uh, strub disabled and you call it from a strub context, then it will report a problem. So this, this, you asked me not to allow you to do that. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> so, uh, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's what was wanted. Uh, I, I'm not sure I mentioned that. I think I didn't mention that before, but uh, when you call, you know, oh, there's a question. Two questions? Okay. So my question would be, you always talk about inlining. So I assume the inlining sees the strap enter and leave inlined into another other function at the gimbal level, and you're not talking about nested up about the call chain. So if if you actually see that, then and and this this watermark pointer is a pointer to basically the stack, right? So and and at strap leave, that's where the clearing is supposed to happen. Uh -huh. Correct. Yeah. So so how do you deal with Gimple, when you have a, a stack variable that doesn't have its address taken, um, that it will think it, it won't alias anything at all, even if you have the most conservative points to information for the watermark pointer, the, 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 this call will not alias stores to not address taken stack variables. So they can be, in theory, freely moved around the strap leaf call. Of course, maybe nothing, there's no incentive to do that, but in theory, nothing prevents that. And I don't see how you fix that. So, so I wonder why do you do the instrumentation before inlining and not after inlining? Um, we do inlining before introducing these calls, uh, except for um, well, there's IPA inlining, and then there is uh, tray inlining afterwards, if I remember correctly. Uh, Sorry, there's IPA inlining, afterwards. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes. So, so there are two different inlines, and, and we do it between those two. So uh, it may happen, um, and. I'm not sure, but it may be the reason why we we turned the inline shrub leave into um, uh, a conditional and and the the adjustments to defer inlining to the caller of the uh, inline combination is to address this sort of problem. Uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure this is the only reason for that. But it's certainly one of the reasons for, for, for that transformation. So I, I honestly don't remember that this was the only reason, but, but it, 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 that's the way it is addressed. So did you consider moving the instrumentation after the final inlining? Or, or why, why do you even, even, even uh, want to run into the situation that you have to enable this transform of undoing, basically undoing the instrumentation after inlining. That's essentially what the expansion uh, ends up doing in a way. So I didn't, uh, I, at that point I did not consider changing that because it, 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 it was working. 
it was uh, I mean it, it it was solid so I was happy with that but presumably it, it would make things different have you considered uh, doing the stack scrubbing at in the function epilogue instead of doing it in the color because That's... in the function epilogue you you know the size of the of the stack you consumed and perhaps uh, you could do it in steps like uh, at the start of the epilogue clean most of it and then then deal with uh, with those few bytes from yeah, the that, that was the, the that was the uh, uh, stack arrays implementation did, and I, I I didn't see how to do that in a machine independent way. Uh, I, I figured that to 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 modify the epilogue, uh, in, in in several circumstances, we 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 found ourselves needing a special register to hold uh, to be able to iterate over the range and and and. Having to select a register, uh, and, and particularly in architectures that don't have a lot of registers, which are not so common these days, but uh, I, I didn't feel that this was the way to go. I thought uh, having the, allowing the caller to deal with this with entire flexibility w w would make for a more, far more portable implementation. Uh, so I went for that. That's true, but well, maybe it could be mostly done in generic code and with, with a few, with, with a one that's target exactly, hook. That's or, exactly or, what Stack Race does. Yeah. It, because it, the, there is very the little machine-specific code. It, it has the advantage that it doesn't change the ABI. We don't change the ABI. We inter if, you, if, you, if you add the wrappers, yes, then. If you add the wrappers, then the ABI is preserved. If you uh, mark the function as having a special property, then it does. So the, there's no uh, behind the scenes change going on. It's, it's, it's all uh, visible and uh, as the user requests. So I, I, I think that's fine. Um, so wrapping up this, this, uh, uh, this feature. Um, so we don't split functions that have uh, shrubbing enabled. We could, but that, that was not implemented. We have to enable shrubbing in both. Um, we are careful about not inlining functions that require stack scrubbing into functions that don't have stack scrubbing enabled. And there is a potential improvement to be made uh, when we decide that we're, we're not inlining a function into another function because of this, and then we inline this function into another that has Strub being enabled, then we could go back and revisit the, 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 more, the innermost function and, and try to inline that. There is no logic to do that right now. Um, there is an optimization in GCC that removes a stack adjustment after a call. If we are just about to return, uh, we have to disable that when, when strobing is enabled for a function. Otherwise, we, we won't clean up the entire uh, stack uh, for the callee. Um, there, because in some cases we call a function to, to uh, scrub the stack, uh, instead of expanding it inline. Uh, there is a small uh, stack range that may not be scrubbed, that the stack scrubbing function uses. Um, I've pondered uh, introducing a, a small loop after the call to clean up that stack range too, but I haven't done that. Uh, it didn't seem uh, important enough. Uh, yeah? Do you think that uh, this implementation be extensible enough that if an architecture um, supported either like a some kind of mode where it was doing this or new instructions, that it would be easy to add that kind of support in instead of doing uh, routines or inlines? 
So an intrinsic of some sort. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about performance, right? And uh, if you tell the architecture this is what you want to do, you can optimize things in order to you know, minimize cache impacts and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but it, it would not be uh, explicit code that did this. It would be either a mode or, or a set of instructions. So remember when I mentioned that I wrote the, the, the inline loop as a loop because the memset call was harder to parse, that was only for the slide. The, the, the actual generated code is a memset which GCC uh, uses an optimized sequence to, to, to expand. So, so doing that would be easy for... It's, it's already done, it's already is what done. I'm saying. Okay. I mean, it was already done before, I just used the existing feature. So uh, for testing purposes, you can enable uh, strubbing for all functions or even select which mode you, you, you want to prefer. Uh, I've used this for, to bootstrap GCC, and it's pretty cool. It it's, cleans up everything after itself, and, and, and it's beautiful. <laughs> so hardened conditionals. This is in GCC 12 already. We have two new flags, one to harden uh, conditional branches, and the other to harden compares, which uh, compute a boolean and store it in, in, in a variable, typically. Uh, and the idea here is to catch uh, hardware glitches, like a power-deprived processor that, that yields a result that if you do the same operation in a slightly different way, will yield a different and incompatible result, and, and then you catch the condition that oh, something's wrong, I better stop running because otherwise I might leak a, a private key or something. Um, so the, what we do is to reverse the compare. The, there, is a, there is a compare, be it for a branch, be it to store the result. We reverse that. I think the next slide will show in better detail. So we have a compare. Uh, and if, if the result is true, then we perform the same, uh, the reverse operation and check that the result is also the reverse. Uh, if, if we got true and the, the reverse test also gets true, oops, something is wrong, stop running. Uh, if we got false and then the reverse operation uh, also gets false, then oops, something is wrong, better stop running. Uh, you know that, that uh, there is a prime uh, marker on each of the uh, comparisons that use apparently the same variables. This is, uh, to, to, this is supposed to mean uh, that we took a copy of the variable, uh, or not necessarily a copy, but we, we made GCC forget that it had already tested that, that compare to avoid it being just optimized away. Uh, when we compare uh, and store in a variable, we ba basically do the same thing, but without branches too. Uh, in one case or the other, we follow the pattern of the original code. We reverse the operation, and if we get the same result for the original compare and the reverse compare, then something's wrong, stop running. Uh, and in the, the second case, uh, we may find uh, vector uh, compares, and uh, I didn't deal with that. We could deal with that, uh, but the trick, the, the tricky, slightly tricky part is that we don't want to, to just test that the results are the same. We want to test if any of the compares in the vector uh, yielded true uh, or yielded the same result, and if so, we want to abort. So there is no, there, there is not exactly a uh, animated way to do that, uh, but it's in, in sort of the roadmap, I suppose. Hardened booleans. Uh, the idea here is to increase the Hamming distance between true and false, so that a single bit flip will will, will not go undetected. Um, 
this catches uh, RAM problems or sometimes even CPU problems. Um, and we, we, we have, this feature is pretty much built into ADA. Um, so the, the f first four lines in the code block here uh, are standard ADA, and they define a, 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 boolean, a boolean type that in ADA is an enumeration uh, that has constants false and true associated with specific X uh, values, 5A and A5 in this case, which are uh, with eight bits are a maximal Hamming distance. Every bit has to be flipped. Yeah? Microphone? Wouldn't it make a bit more sense to use values that actually slightly overlap so that you could actually check for the, um, the case when the, they were flipped by some other code? Uh, yeah, I guess. You, you, so, you, 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 you can define the values. The, the, the point is you can use whatever values you like. Okay, so right. the, yeah. this is, this is, it's this flexible. You, but you right. can choose yeah. the constants. Something like five you, five and five eight. You can use the, the yeah. you can choose the, the, the width of the, the booleans. You can choose the represented uh, the presented uh, uh, values that are going to be stored. And the, 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 the catch here is that if if any value any different value is stored, then ADA validity checking will will detect that and, and raise an exception. What we, we added here is a, uh, an attribute to mark uh, this kind of Boolean to make sure that validity checking is done at every uh, point of use because ADA is flexible in the sense that you could check at the point of store and then you wouldn't detect the, the situation that we wanted to detect, which is the, what you stored in memory is not what you got back. Now, we proposed it for C as well as an extension. Uh, the, this, this attribute was proposed for GCC 13, uh, in which you, we add the hard bool attribute that takes two, oper two optional operands. Uh, first one is the value for false, and the second is the value for true. If you don't provide it, then it will use the bit flipped pattern of false. And if you don't provide false, it will use zero. Um, it's a modifier for integral types. So you can choose the width that way. Um, and it's a very simple language extension in that every, any uh, R value you use decays to bool. So it's checked at that point. And when you, when, when you compare two other types, whether from or to uh, hardened booleans, uh, you, you, you always go through bool first, and then, uh, so it, it's, a, it's a very simple model, mental model. Uh, here's some code samples. Uh, zero initialization, uh, thanks Richard. Uh, uh, it was worth mentioning in the docs. Um, we, well, it, it's not uh, written as zero unless you, you request zero as a false pattern, but it, it gets initialized to false. Uh, and auto initialization doesn't happen. So if you, you get garbage, you will, using that variable will, will trap. Yeah? Oh, and in C, it's a trap. It doesn't raise an exception like Ada. Um, what happens if you compare a hardened bool with an integer or a car? Is that a trap it, as well? It, every R value gets converted to bool. So the, the, okay. the, it, it checks for the pattern at that point and then decides is it false or true. And, and, and from that point on, it's a standard bool that, that gets compared. So. Very simple mental model, very small language extension. Uh, for the static or uh, file scope variables, you, so, so you don't zero but store the F, uh, 5A, uh, what do you do about unions in those variables? 
if, if you have uh, a union of Hartpool and... You, get, you pretty much get what you ask for. If you uh, initialize it as a, a hardened Boolean, then you, you will get the conversion. If you initialize it as something else and access it as, as a hardened Boolean, then that's undefined behavior. You, you get what you ask for. So what is first in the union uh, gets initialized by default? Uh, yes, if you don't talking, have an, Since we're talking about C, yeah. C++, th this does not work in C++, if you want something like that, like this, it's make, it makes more sense to, to write a class. So uh, this is C only. Control flow redundancy, uh, that's proposed for GCC 13, and it's, it's intended to catch uh, unexpected, as in not compatible with the control flow graph execution paths. Uh, we instrument the function so that every basic block will set a bit in a bitmap, like this. So in every, the, the, there is this uh, bitmap initialized to zero in, in the beginning of the function, and then every block sets its, its corresponding bit in the bitmap, mm -hmm. And at the end, at every return path, we call a built-in function to verify that the control flow graph is compatible with that bit pattern. Um, in this case, we have three blocks. In theory, it could be as many as, uh, well, as many as the function has. Um, at every edge to the return block, what we check currently is that for every uh, block that was visited, that is for every block that has its bit set, we have at least one of its predecessors set and at least one of its successors set. Uh, we have thought about handling loops and stuff like that, but the overhead was so significant here that I thought that, that uh, adding per iteration tests was not going to go well. So I haven't gone down that path. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to introduce, but it's not done. Um, very recently, after the last code submission, I introduced other flags to, to handle, uh, to introduce checking also at exception escape points. Um, that's enabled by default. We introduce a cleanup around the, the entire function um, with exceptions, so to speak, uh, as in uh, a function that would return directly. And it, uh, we, we, if we can insert the check before that function, that's another option there, uh, then we skip the, the cleanup if it raises an exception. This is a small optimization. Um, in order to uh, enable SIB calls or tail calls, we uh, detect, but it's too early at the point we do this to actually tell what is going to be a tail call and what isn't. So I named these returning calls. There's functions that are called and whose return value is returned to the caller without any intervening uh, uh, operation. Um, we can, we, we can move the check before these, and then uh, uh, that's optional. Uh, we can also uh, introduce checking before no return calls, which may be useful um, if, if the no return call uh, actually doesn't ever, uh, uh, if, if it doesn't immediately terminate the program, if it loops forever. It might make sense for you. You may want to check before calling it instead of waiting for it to return, which will never happen, to then check that the control flow graph was, was uh, respected. Now, uh, if we introduce checks before every no return call, then there are some no return calls that actually return uh, uh, control through exceptions. And then if you have a local handler, uh, it will modify the visited 
uh, bitmap. And then it may call another no return function and so on and so forth. And then you get multiple checks. And that's, uh, that, that's more overhead than we would probably like. So uh, I thought, well, maybe we don't want to check before no returns. Yeah? Sorry if this is a, you already covered this. What is the attack that this is protecting against? Or what is the problem uh, that this is solving? Basically, if I understand correctly, uh, it's supposed to catch uh, return to the middle of functions uh, or jumps to the middle of functions or... Um, so or it's is it basically stopping, is it ROP gadgets? Yeah, the, the, that's one of the cases. There's also CPU malfunctioning that, that, that like memory bit flips that the change code pointers and you end up at some unexpected place and it it doesn't crash before you you reach the end of the function then this will see that something odd happened and and stop uh damaging some i mean trying to stop execution before it breaks yeah, and, something. and stop closer to the source of the problem rather than at some undefined point later can't count on that really but yeah, the, the, stop as soon as possible, or as soon as reasonable. Um, so back to no throw, um, uh, uh, no return. So I figured, well, maybe we want to check just before calling no throw functions, or not instrument before, uh, uh, before a no throw call because of the, the issue of checking again and again and again. Um, so I, I, I realized that a common situation that got me into undesirable early checking was uh, just before calling uh, one of the functions used in the internal implementation of exception raising. You're calling a function that you know that's going to raise an exception, but it's no return. So I introduced an option to not instrument uh, those, but instrument the, all the other no return functions. And then we, we mark uh, internally the, the, the functions used in the, in the uh, exception handling implementation, that these are, are expected to throw functions. Uh, it's kind of an internal attribute. I'm not sure about exposing that. It might be useful to expose it. I, I, I was looking for other uh, potential uses for this, and the only one that came to mind was marking the exception, uh, block, the exception handling block that takes care of the exception raised by that function as hot as opposed to cold. And that's not really worth it. So uh, if anyone can think of, an, of, of another use for this attribute, uh, uh, please let me know, and then maybe we expose it to, to, to users. But uh, I'm not sure about doing that. I, I, I don't see that as really useful, except for this very specific uh, circumstance. Um, so uh, we, we inline the testing, the, the, the verification at the end of the function. Uh, if there is a single exit path in the function, and if there are uh, no more than 16 blocks in the function, otherwise we, we issue an out of line call. Uh, there are parameters to control this. Um, and basically what the, 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 the way we represent the runtime control flow graph for verification is a reasonably compact, but very inefficient uh, uh, in terms of performance uh, for uh, verification. I'm not uh, entirely happy with this, but it's what we got so far. Uh, basically, for every block, there are two lists of, of uh, tuples. Uh, the first one for the predecessors. Is that the right way to say it in English? Thank you. Um, and, and, and so a pairs of bit mask to look, uh, a bit pattern to look for at least one bit set in the visited bitmap and the index into the visited bitmap. So look at this word. If you see one of these bits, 
then, okay, you, you're, you're fine. You found that at least one of the predecessors were, was visited. We're good. Then another list, uh, it's, it's zero terminated. Uh, not a pair of zeros, just a single zero, because it was more compact uh, and less efficient, I suppose. I didn't measure this significantly, by the way. Um, and then the same thing for the successors. Uh, so you can, again, you go through each of them and see, is any of these bits set? If so, we're good. Uh, otherwise, trap. Um, and the way to represent uh, the, the address from the entry block or to the exit block is by using uh, the own block bit, which enables us to avoid representing the entry and the exit blocks in this representation. So one of the issues that I faced while testing these, some of these features was that it's a little hard to, to, to simulate a memory error or a random CPU uh, error. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. I mean, could it, huh? Yeah, there's KMU, there's, uh, we could use GDB and, and, and attach to a specific point and, and, and flip a bit and stuff like that. But, I mean, it, it, it is, it is, it is limited, very limited. It's limiting in that you pretty much have to introduce the, 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 the test uh, right there, at least the GDB uh, idea that I entertained for some time. Uh, I can't like take the whole compiler and enable the, this flag and, and throw it at, 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 at a bootstrap pass and, 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 and catch situations that I didn't think of before. I have to like engineer the, the tests to catch uh, the problems that I was able to think of. So it, it's more limiting in, in a way. I, I, I like uh, to be able to, well, in, 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 in previous projects, I often uh, had the advantage of uh, running bootstrap and, and enable debug information or disable debug information and, and, and check that the generated code was the same. This was a, a very good way to catch problems. Uh, I, I wasn't that lucky in this project. Alexandra, so. I think I'll, I'll dig it out for you. There was a PhD, and I can't for the life of me, I, I reviewed it I'm a, about three or four years ago at TUM on exactly how to set up hardware to give you the, to test this stuff. Awesome. Uh, I, I can remember the, first guy, the guy's first name. He's one of your compatriots, Raoul, but I, I can't for the life of me remember his second name. I'll dig it out and send it. Please to send me an email. Yeah. This, this is a real hard problem for this. How do you prove it works on hardware just, rather than just in simulation? Awesome. Uh, I, I would love to, to, to get more testing coverage for, for the error paths uh, that, that haven't got a lot of coverage so far. Um, I mentioned using Bootstrap for testing. Um, yeah. Uh, may I, uh, on the subject of testing, and maybe a, a higher level question about testing of hardening features, uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but um, have you kind of engaged with any, I guess, penetration testers to sort of attack? Sorry? I... Uh, do you know penetration testing? Yeah. Where, you know, we, we, we're here with our sort of defense hats on mm -hmm. in terms of how do we protect against attacks, but you know, specialists who are like kind of the bad, you know, friendly bad guys to like how well does this mitigate and like, oh, is there like a they can just step round it, there's some weakness. Uh, I wondered if you, for, for various different hardening approaches you've tried, um, if you've kind of had a friendly, uh, um, what would it be, black hat or whatever, gray hat or something, um, attack them. So uh, I mentioned early in the speech that this was a kind of a partnership. Uh, uh, so we, we, we have supplied the implementations to, uh, the early implementations, to the, the, the partner. And I at least had an expectation that they were going to like throw rocks at it and, and, and see whether it served well the, 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 the purpose. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard a lot back. So I, I'm not sure that means that it actually worked. Uh, I, 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 have to, I have to verify that assumption. 
but uh, I, I, I really don't know so far. Um, so wrapping up, um, one, one trick that, that I often resorted to was to enable, uh, to introduce an option to enable it for, for everything and, and, and run a bootstrap, run the test suite, and, and there are lots of errors in general when you change the code patterns. There are lots of tests that expect specific code patterns, and then we have to check that those well, okay, it, it, it changed the code, but it, it, it broke the expectations of the test, but it didn't, it doesn't mean that we have a problem here. So it's not extremely convenient, but it helps uh, grow the, 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 the test coverage. <clears throat> uh, one particularly uh, interesting case here is that uh, testing scrubbing, testing stack scrubbing after you release a portion of the stack, uh, you, you may take a timer signal and that may write stuff into that part of the stack. And this actually happens in, in testing pretty frequently using QEMU. I don't know exactly why, but then the expected zeros were in there. And then, oh, there's something wrong with, with the stack, stack clearing? No. It's, it's fine, it's just that uh, the, this unexpect, the unexpected uh, stack change took place and, and it seemed like something went wrong. But uh, accessing stack space that has been released or any memory space that has already been released is always risky in this regard. Um, in the end, we have lots of tests handwritten and, and, and verifying that the, the code is doing what we expect. And, and that's uh, s somehow unsatisfying to me. I would like to get a lot more coverage than that. And, and, and um, I look forward to Jeremy's email. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much for bearing with me. There was a lot of material to cover. Uh, I hope it wasn't uh, too, uh, uh, too much information, too much time. I, don't, I didn't take note when we started. Do we have still time for questions? Uh, yeah, I think we, uh, yes, I think we have uh, time. Uh, are there any questions? I see. So, uh, as I was saying, any questions? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Oh, is there a question? So, thank you very much. <laughs>